the Pathways program, I think, really embodies what the MGH research and clinical experience is about. It um, is a two-week elective that allows residents uh, to get really deeply involved in a clinical case without a clear diagnosis and without a clear management plan. It is a service that allows residents, when they have those interesting patients on the big low and the internal medicine um, rotations, to actually take time to dive into what's truly going on. The service is uh, designed to focus on patients who have extreme phenotypes uh, and to explore them uh, clinically uh, and scientifically, and as important from the point of view of uh, education for the residents. In our everyday practice, we don't often get to focus on one patient and think about what doesn't fit in their presentation and how that might inform our understanding of disease and how that could affect how we treat that patient and other patients. For people where we don't understand or where their disease or their course really doesn't fit in, the Massachusetts General Hospital can offer a whole different way of thinking about that process and that pathophysiology that could both have a major impact on that patient, but also we think help us understand the pathophysiology there for many patients. First, we pick an appropriate patient. Then the resident team and their advisors go visit with the patient and the family, get medical history, and then step back and think about underlying themes that might um, explain all the uh, symptoms that the patient is presenting with. That usually then leads to the identification of experts we might want to speak with both at MGH and across the country or the world. We then have those conversations, which then iteratively helps us uh, weed out certain hypotheses and then emphasize others. That then culminates in the noon conference where the residents present their most interesting hypotheses back to the hospital. Ideally, we would follow up on these hypotheses and perform the experiments in, the lab in laboratories with the, in collaboration with uh, investigators at MGH or elsewhere, and those data would then come back to inform the clinical care of patients like the index patient who suffer from similar symptoms. We try to pick patients that have uh, a fundamental pathophysiological problem or that speak to a fundamental pathophysiological problem in a way that we believe can be explored scientifically. I think the idea, right, is that there's a moment in time when we're taking care of a patient where all of a sudden we understand that the label we may have put on the patient or what we expected to happen isn't what we're seeing in front of us. And that maybe we thought they had a certain type of lung disease, but they're not responding the way that we thought they would to treatment, or they get another problem on top of it. And at that moment, we understand that there may be an ability to understand the biology that's driving that presentation. So the charge is to select individual patients on the wards who present some kind of puzzle, uh, and the solution to that puzzle should help us find a new mechanism for disease so that we can then apply that to a broader spectrum of patients. Creating the opportunity for us to use the human, to use the patient as the model by which we actually care for patients, explore and understand what, are, what is normal physiology, what is abnormal physiology, especially in areas where we don't fully understand that, becomes increasingly important. And most of the important questions, if we look back in the last hundred years, most of the important questions that have been answered in biology started with a clinical observation that wasn't fully understood. Well, I think during the history of science and medicine, we've seen individual patients or small cadres of patients really change the way we think. So for example, sickle cell anemia is a great one. It really allowed us to focus on the mechanisms by which hemoglobin transports oxygen throughout the body in red blood cells. But that was a small number of very well-characterized patients that allowed us to come up with that conclusion. My hope is that what we ultimately are doing are really narrowing that gap between a patient's experience of a disease and some outcome that we don't understand and bringing the tools of research to address that problem. So the ultimate goal with what we've put into biomedical research in our country over the last 50 years 
should be really an incredibly narrow gap between identifying a way we could help a patient and bringing all of those research tools to that problem and moving forward in something that used to take decades, if not a century, so that we're really making a difference in the space of years. The residents need some time sequestered from their standard duties because their commitments uh, on the clinical service have become so uh, time-consuming uh, and the paperwork so overwhelming as to uh, make them very efficient, but also to interfere with the opportunity to take a more thoughtful and contemplative approach to some of these questions. Pathways is a really tremendous opportunity for residents for maybe the first time in their training experience to check some of the labels that we've learned throughout medical school, the diagnoses, the sort of arbitrary classifications that we sometimes give to patients, and take a, take a step back and hit the pause button and really delve deep into the pathophysiology alone and begin to answer questions and ask questions about why a patient is presenting in the way that they are.